What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the best damn alchemical hydra guide ever. In this video, we're going to encompass everything you need to know about the alchemical hydra, hard requirements, suggested requirements, location and how to get there, gear setups, boss room layouts, boss mechanics, and some example kills. Without further ado, let's get into this with some hard requirements. Hard requirements. There are two things that you will need to have an alchemical hydra task. Number one is level 95 slayer. You have to be on a slayer task to kill the alchemical hydra. There is no other way that you can go there and camp kills. You will also only be able to get the hydra tasks from Konar, who is the slayer master up on Mount Karum. Next, you will also have to have access to the continent of Zaya. You can do this by speaking with Veos at Port Serim, and he will take you over there for the first time. Those are your only two hard requirements, but let's get into some suggested requirements. Suggested requirements. For your suggested requirements, you will actually only need two specific levels. One is level 90 range. That is what I recommend you have if you are attempting to kill the Alchemical Hydra. Any less than this, your kills will be impossibly slow and probably very frustrating. Next is going to be at least a level 44 prayer, and this will encompass Protect from Magic, Protect from Missiles, and the Eagle Eye prayer. I would not suggest doing this boss without a minimum of 44 and the Eagle Eye prayer. Next, I have a suggested requirement which is kind of steep. That is the Karend Kebos Elite Diary. And having this done will give you the Rada's Blessing 4, which will teleport you directly to the catacombs where the Alchemical Hydra is located. It is going to be your fastest way of getting there, which we will cover in just a bit. Additionally, you will also be able to use any kind of boots that you want down in those catacombs. If you don't have this done, you have to wear a certain type of boots to protect your feet from the heat of the floor. If you don't have those, you will die very quickly and lose all your stuff, and that's not good. Next, you will also want to probably have started the Fairy Tale 2 Cure Queen quest, and this is for the use of fairy rings if you don't have the Karend Kebos Elite Diaries. The Fairy Ring is going to be your next fastest possibility of getting there. Location and how to get there. Our first couple of ways to get there, which are not really suggested because they are a bit longer of a run. Uh, first one is going to be the Farming Guild Teleport. You can use this with a skilling necklace and it'll take you out to the entrance of the Farming Guild. You will then want to travel up to the northeast following the red line here. The red line will take you all the way around if you don't have the proper agility requirements for those shortcuts up the mountain. First one requires 29, the second one requires 62. You can have five less agility levels in this with a summer pie to boost your agility to get up those slopes. Additionally, you also have the option of the Battlefront Teleport, which is an Arceus Teleport on the Arceus Spellbook, and you can use that Teleport Tablet or the Spell, depending on what you have available to you. The next method, and more preferred method, is going to be by using the Fairy Ring, C-I-R, which will take you right to the base of the mountain here, and then you can once again follow the red path on the screen all the way around if you don't have the proper agility levels, or once again, 29 agility for the first shortcut and 62 for the rest of the way up the mountain. Our last and most preferred method of getting to the Alchemical Hydra is going to be with the Rada's Blessing 4, which will provide you with unlimited teleports to the top of Mount Karum. It is just a very short walk to the, I guess you can call it elevator, that will take you down into the catacombs to the Alchemical Hydra. Once you have proceeded with one of the aforementioned methods of getting to the Alchemical Hydra and you go down into the catacombs here, there are two methods to get there. Following the red path will take you the long way. You will have to run through the normal hydras, so you'll have to use a little bit of prayer running through there so you don't take too much damage. It's kind of hit or miss whether you're going to get attacked with magic or ranged running through there, so just pick one and hope you get lucky. Additionally, if you do have level 88 agility or 83 with a boost, you can use the green path to take a little tunnel that will take you past the hydras so you don't have to worry about that and it will take you right to the room prior to the alchemical hydras instance suggested gear setups first up we are going to check out our low tier gear setup and this is pretty much going to be the bottom of the barrel i would not suggest going with anything less than this Slayer Helmet imbued for that 15% boost to damage and accuracy for ranged. Ava's Accumulator, but if you do have an Assembler, definitely use that. Amulet of Fury, Unholy Blessing. Toxic Blowpipe is going to be our weapon. You're going to want to use Adamant, Darts, or better. Zamorak Blessed Dehyde, top and bottom, and that will give you a little bit of prayer bonus. Barrow's Gloves, 
Boots of Stone, but if you do have the Kebos Karend Elite Diaries done, you'll replace those with some sort of ranging boots, such as God Dehyde Boots or Pagasians, and an Archer's Ring imbued. Over in the inventory, one Divine Ranging Potion, one Antidote Plus Plus, six Prayer Potions, ten Sharks, and in the Rune Pouch, you're going to want to have Nature Runes and Fire Runes for high-level alchemies. The Alchemical Hydra does drop a lot of alchemical items and House Teleports to get yourself out. Next up is our medium tier setup, and for this one, it's a little bit pricey for a medium tier setup, but that's because the low end and the best in slot are so far apart, I had to pick something that worked in there for the medium tier setup. So for this one, Slayer Helmet imbued once again in the helmet slot, Ava's Assembler, if you have an accumulator, that will work, Necklace of Anguish, in the ammunition slot, we have Ruby Dragon Bolts Enchanted, and you'll use those down to 40% hit points on the Alchemical Hydra. Dragon Hunter Crossbow is going to be our weapon with a Twisted Buckler as the offhand. Bless D hide top and bottom. Barrow's Gloves, I do have Pegasian Boots in this one, but if you don't have uh, the Karend or Kebos Elite Diaries done, you'll want to swap those out for Brimstone Boots or Boots of Stone. And finally, an Archer's Ring imbued. Over in the inventory, almost identical, just two less sharks. As for the Toxic Blowpipe, we'll switch over to this at 40% hit points because it will out DPS, switching to Diamond Dragon Bolts Enchanted. Once again, in the rune pouch, natures and fire runes and house teleports to get out after the trip. Next up is going to be our high tier setup, and this is going to be considered best in slot for the alchemical hydra, and I'll explain everything once I get through. Slayer helmet imbued in the helmet slot, ranging cape, necklace of anguish, dragon arrows in the ammunition slot, twisted bow for your weapon, crystal plate body and plate legs, barrow's gloves, devout boots, and a ring of the god's eye is going to be your gear. In the inventory, we have three Divine Ranging Potions, two Antidote Plus Pluses, 13 Super Restores, four Sharks, a Toxic Blowpipe, Bone Crusher, Crystal Dust, a Rada's Blessing 4 for the Teleport. Most people that are this far along in an account probably have the Karen Kebos Diaries done. Once again, in the Rune Pouch, Nature Runes and Fire Runes, and a Construction Cape to get yourself out. But if you don't have that, obviously House Teleports will work. Now, the reason that this is considered best in slot is because the Alchemical Hydra does have a very high magic level, so the Twisted Bow will be capped on damage your max hit on a Slayer task with 99 range, Dragon Arrows, and this particular gear, or any gear if you're using a Twisted Bow, is going to be 83. Basically, when you're using this setup, you want to maximize your prayer bonus, because regardless of whether you have the super high ranging bonus or not, your accuracy and damage are still going to be fantastic because of that magic level. I also, in the inventory, have the Toxic Blowpipe, and that is for heals, just in case you need them. Bone Crusher, because most people that are staying for trips like this, they don't bank the bones, and you'll use the Bone Crusher just to get the passive prayer XP, and just to get them off the floor if you're already 99. Whatever floats your boat. And last, the Crystal Dust. The Alchemical Hydra does drop ranging potions from time to time, so if you have the opportunity to stay longer, you can bring the Crystal Dust and make more Divine Ranging Potions. And last is going to be my specific setup. This is what I take to the Alchemical Hydra every single time. Imbued Slayer Helm, Max Cape with the Vorecast head added to it, Necklace of Anguish, Dragon Arrows, Twisted Bow, Armadillo Chest Plate, and Chain Skirt, Barrow's Gloves, Devout Boots, and a Ring of Suffering imbued. Over in my inventory, one Divine Ranging Potion, one Antidote Plus Plus, four Prayer Potions, six Sharks, a Rada's Blessing, and the Rune Pouch with High Alchemy spells in it. I use this setup because the only place that I would particularly use crystal armor in a ring of the gods imbued is at the alchemical hydra. And I don't really think it's worth the purchase for me just to buy it for the alchemical hydra. So this setup actually does me very well. I also don't like leaving the bones on the ground because it is a lot of money that stacks up over time. So generally with this setup based on drops, I generally get five to eight kills. Eight being at the top end, and that will fill up my entire inventory and usually use all four prayer potions. Boss Room Layout For the first thing that we'll discuss in the Boss Room Layout, you'll see tile markers on the floor. They are color-coded. These are going to be for each phase of the Alchemical Hydra, which we will get into later. If you do have Rune Light, you will have the ability to mark tiles and change the colors of them in the Ground Markers plugin. It probably works with OS Buddy 2. I don't know. I don't use it. But regardless, you'll see squares on the ground, large squares, one red near the southern end, the green one in the northeastern, and the blue one in the northwestern. These are also going to be explained soon in the boss mechanics section. So don't worry about that. Right now, we're just focusing on tiles. 
Next, you will see the room tiles that are now numbered. These are going to be the spaces that you want to move in sequence from one all the way up to possibly 15 if you make it that far. You will also have the ability to mark these tiles from outside the room, so don't worry about having to go in there, kill the Hydra, then mark your tiles. You can do it from standing just outside the door and by zooming all the way out. Next up, we are gonna see which way you should move and when for the boss room layout. So after the third attack of the fight, you will avoid the asset attack and move to tile number two. You will then make your way down towards tile number five by luring the Hydra once it changes forms over to six then to seven, and then you'll avoid the electricity after the third attack of the blue phase to tile number eight. Move to tile number nine to set it up for the next transformation. El 10 and then 11 will put you in a position to move to 12 and then 13 to 14 is going to be your flame skip after the third attack. And I will explain that in the example kills. 14 and 15 are going to be the tiles that you move backwards to avoid an acid attack. And finally, if you do make it through the black phase where you have to come around to another acid attack, you'll move towards the south to avoid that one and finish up your kill. Additionally, if you are using the Runelight client, you can also hold shift and right click your tiles and label them if you would like to number them to remember which way to move. Mechanics and Attacks the first thing you need to know about the Alchemical Hydra is the combat triangle orientation. It does change forms and it is based off of the combat rotation by color, meaning the first form is ranged, so it will need to be lured onto that big red square we talked about, which signifies melee and range is weak to melee. Next is going to be magic, which needs to be lured onto the green square because range is stronger than magic. And last, it will need to be lured onto the blue square because magic counters melee, which is the red form. The last phase of the alchemical hydra is black. It does not have a weakness and does not need to be lured. Next is going to be the transformation points of the alchemical hydra fight. The alchemical hydra does transform three times during the fight. As you can see on the screen, it starts out at 1,100 HP, 100% health. It will transform to the blue phase under 875 HP, which is 75%. Transforms to the red phase at 550 HP, 50%, and it will finally transform into the black phase at 275 HP, or 25% of its remaining health. And now basically what you see on the screen now is a representation of where the Hydra needs to be lured in order to weaken it. If you do not weaken the Hydra, it does have 75% damage reduction. So for example, if you were to hit an 80 with a twisted bow on the Hydra, if you failed to lure it and failed to weaken it on the correct square, your damage would only come out at 20. And it will remain like that for the duration until you correctly lure the Hydra. Next up are the basic attacks of the Alchemical Hydra. It does only attack with magic and ranged, which you can see on the screen here. On the left side, you'll see magic, and they are a little bit different. They're both green, kind of hard to tell, but I did zoom in here. So on the magic attack, they'll look like they have little tails on them, kind of like comets or meteors or something of that nature. As for the ranged attack, it looks like two little barbs that are coming at you. They are solid, they do not have tails, so that's how you can tell the difference. Next up, we are going to cover the specific special attacks of each Hydra phase. They all have their own. The first one will start out with the green phase, since it is the beginning of the fight. After every third attack of the start of the fight, you will see acid splats that are fired at you. All you have to do is move off of them and at least away from the adjacent square, so two tiles away from the splat, and you will not take any damage. If you do manage to get hit by it, just go ahead and drink an antidote plus plus, carry your poison, and carry on. Following this, there will be nine basic attacks. After the ninth basic attack, another special attack will occur, and that will repeat over and over again until you complete the phase. Next, for the blue phase of the fight, this is the electricity phase. Once again, after the third attack of the phase, the alchemical hydra will shoot electricity toward the middle of the room, which will then navigate towards you. All you have to do for this is wait until it gets about two to three tiles away from you, and then continue on to the next mark tile in the rotation. This will avoid all of the electricity. If you do get hit by the electricity, it will take damage and you will be rooted to the spot for a couple of seconds. For the next phase, the red phase or the fire phase, whichever you want to call it, after the third attack, the alchemical hydra will begin walking towards the middle of the room. Once it reaches that point, it will root you to the spot. You will not be able to move. It will shoot out two walls of flames and then the third attack, 
will shoot flames in your general direction. Now this is where our flame skip comes in. If you do flame skip, you will not have to walk out the flames. So I'm not even gonna show that because flame skipping is very easy. So we are gonna learn how to flame skip right now so you don't have to worry about walking out the flames. As the alchemical hydra starts his walk to the middle of the room, you want to go from tile number 11 up to tile number 12. You can get an extra attack in here or you can just move to tile number 13 where the flame skip starts. Now I'm going to pause the clip here for just a second. What you will want to do at this point is prepare to click tile number 14. As soon as the Hydra starts winding up its attack to fire a flame ball at you, you will click on tile number 14 and move to that tile. The flames will hit and they will travel to where you were standing. They cannot come back to you because they have nowhere to go. So the flames just stop. So we'll play it out here so you can watch and I have slowed it down just for better viewing. If you didn't catch it the first time, I'll run it back one more time. Make sure you watch when the alchemical hydra starts to attack to shoot the flames. You will then click on the next tile to proceed and skip the flames. After you have managed to take the alchemical hydra below 25% health, it will transform into the black face. Now there's a kicker here. No longer does the alchemical hydra use three of the same attacks in a row. It is going to alternate every single attack. So if you start with a mage attack, it will then become range, then back to mage, and so on. If you start with a range attack, it will then become mage, and then range, and so on. And also, just like the green phase, the alchemical hydra is going to use that acid attack once again. So after the third attack of the black phase, you will see an acid pool attack. And then after nine more attacks, it will then shoot another round of acid pools. Once again, all you have to do is move out of the way. The last mechanic that you have to know is the death mechanic. The hydra is in an instanced area, so if you die, you will have to come outside when you come back and talk to this guy who you see here on the screen. You will have to pay 100,000 GP to collect your items back. It does not go to a gravestone since this is an instanced area. So if you are using max, you won't have to spend 500,000 GP to get your stuff back. Only 100,000. Talk to this guy, collect your stuff, and get back to work. Example fights and kills. All right, so let's get into this example kill. So I'm using the Dragon Hunter Crossbow and Toxic Blowpipe Switch kill clip for this video. You can use any weapon you want here. It all works the same no matter what you're using. This one just happened to have everything in it that I needed to show a kill. At the beginning of the kill, it is a 50-50 chance whether the Alchemical Hydra is going to start with magic or range. My quick prayers are set to ranged and rigor because just pick one and roll with it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the door here to go in, turn on my quick prayers, and then I am going to immediately run over to tile number one. If you're starting a kill after you've already been in the room, just start at tile number one. So that was our third attack there. Poison splats are coming. I'm just going to go ahead and move out of the way as soon as they're fired at me. Move to tile number two. Fire a shot to tile number three, fire a shot to tile number four, and then fire another shot to tile number five. Now I'm going to wait right here, because if I pull the alchemical hydra too early, when it gets hit by the green vent in the green phase, it will increase the damage that the hydra can do if you miss a prayer switch. So there it is, under 75% health. Move back to blue square, and then move up to the corner of the room there. And we're just going to continue on ranging. That was attack number one, and two, and attack number three. So now it's going to fire the electricity towards the center of the room. And once it travels to me, just a few spaces away from me, I'm going to run over to the northeast corner here. There we go, back into the corner, fire a shot, and move to the next blue square there. And now I'm going to want to stay right here for the same reason. I don't want to lure the Hydra onto the blue square in the blue phase too early, because it will do extra damage. So once I take it under... 50% HP here, I will move back to that first red square. So there it should be, yep. And under 50% HP, lure it onto the blue square, fire a shot, move up to the next red square. And now we're just gonna wait here. So as soon as the Hydra starts walking towards the center of the room, that will be our cue. Also, I wanna pause the clip right here for something I forgot to mention while I was recording this live and explaining the kill. Under 440 HP is where you would want to switch to the blowpipe on the Dragon Hunter Crossbow blowpipe combo. So that is 440 HP. As soon as you go under that number, switch to your blowpipe with adamant darts or better. So it should start walking right here. We're going to get another shot off, move up, get one more shot off, and then move up to our flame skip. 
So firewall number one, firewall number two, and there's the attack move. And there is the flame skip. So no flames trailing me. If you do happen to get a flame skip and it is trailing you, you just have to walk it off. Turn your run off and just walk until the fire stops following you. Into the black face and over to the next prayer. It will use the opposite attack of what it just used. Ranged, magic, ranged, back to magic. And the next one is going to be the poison splat. Get out of the way. Magic, ranged again, back to magic, ranged, magic, ranged, and the kill is over. Very simple. Very simple. Hydra is very, very simple. It is literally old school runescapes counting to three simulator. So I hope after seeing this kill, it can point you in the right direction to successfully getting as many alchemical Hydra kills as your heart desires. Ending words. All right, everybody, that is going to wrap up this guide to the alchemical Hydra. I hope that if you didn't know some things, you have learned some things throughout this video. If you like content like this in old school guides, please consider subscribing to the channel. All the support you guys give me really means a ton to me. And if you like the video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up down below. If you think I missed anything or have any questions or comments, you can leave that down below as well. Additionally, I do have a Alchemical Hydra gear progression guide, which will also be linked in the description below, just in case any of the previous gear setups don't really work for you. So I will see you guys on the next one. Take it easy, everybody.